All right, I have for you today on my top five most toxic thoughts that are get in the way of women releasing weight. And most of these women aren't even aware that they're doing it. I've learned this by helping over thousands and thousands of women in my free workshops and many hundreds of women within my programs. And it's this, this is the third one. And there's number one and number two have already been released. Go find those. But this is the third one. Once I lose weight, I'll X, Y, Z, fill in the blank. I'll join the gym. I'll go on the trip. I'll buy new cute clothes. I'll start dating. I'll pick up a new habit, uh, like a new, like um, start hiking or like a, like a new pastime. Once I lose weight, then I deserve or I'll get to do this. And you think that you're motivating yourself. You think that you're helping yourself get there. But actually what's going on in a brain science perspective is that you are teaching your brain that you do not deserve to go after your desires unless your body reflects a certain number on the scale or a certain, you know, pant size. This is so problematic in the long run because it keeps you from living life. And not only that, but the type of emotions that you're creating from thoughts of once I, once I, um, you know, lose the weight, then I'll go on the vacation. What kind of emotion is that creating? Is creating emotions of shame that somehow I'm not worthy to go right now. Shame is never a helpful emotion. I like to think of emotions as tools because emotions create a, a quality of energy. And when you reach into your tool bag, your emotion bag, and start using shame, it is a terrible tool. It never gets us where we want to go. I haven't been able to find a, a, an application of shame yet that's been helpful in creating the result long run that we're actually truly seeking. Sometimes shame, shame can create short-term change, but it never creates from the inside out someone who actually is that person that gets the result they want. It's always this by force, by coercion, by shaming. And so like I have to earn my worthiness. So when you think, ah, uh, once I lose the weight, then I'll X, Y, Z, you're teaching your brain that you're not worthy to live your desires unless your body reflects a certain size or a certain weight on the scale. And we, we, we mistakenly think this because to motivate myself, but it's actually doing the opposite in the long run. Instead, I say, whatever it is that you want to do, do it now. And if you are of a certain size that you actually can't do that thing physically, then do whatever is the closest next thing to that that you can do. Teach your brain that you are worthy of everything that you want right now. And when you do that, you are much more likely to become the person who also releases the weight and keeps it off. I have seen this over and over and over with the clients that I work with. They say, oh, I, I, I don't fit into any of my wardrobe. I have to lose the weight so I can start wearing my clothes again. And I say, stop it. Go buy a few outfits that you feel good in right now. Right now, teach your brain that you are worthy of feeling good in your clothes right now. Teach your brain that you are worthy no matter what size your body is because you are not your body. Sun's getting a little bright here. Sorry. If I start squinting. Also, when you say, oh, once I lose the weight, then I'll go on the trip. You are deferring. I I'm thinking of one particular past client who for many years kept saying, I'm going to go to Hawaii. I'm going to go to Hawaii. I'm going to go to Hawaii. And when I finally started working with her, she scheduled the trip to Hawaii she had not lost all the weight that she wanted to lose. She still had um, a fair bit more to lose. And so she thought that, you know, by her past um, qualifications, she wasn't where she was supposed to be in order to be able to go on the trip. But she went on the trip and I said, how was it? She was worried that she would feel self before, right? In the old way of thinking, she was worried that she'd feel self-conscious, that people would be looking at her body and be judging her. And the result after the work that we did and after she realized she was worthy to go on the trip now, she went, she had a great time. She made memories. She put on a swimsuit. She goes, I didn't think anything about it. I was so much more focused in on my family and on enjoying where I was. She goes, I was not thinking about my body. Our bodies are here not to validate any type of worthiness of ourselves. We didn't create ourselves. Our value is already fixed. The question is, what type of experiences do I want to have in this life while I'm housed within this body? The quickest way to be who you want to become is by being who you want to become.
Get as close as you possibly can or do the thing that you've been putting off in the future until you lose the weight. Do it now. Teach your brain that that's who you already are. And as you move forward, then the lifestyle of the person who maintains the healthy weight is who you've already become from the inside out. Never put off something that you desire until you lose the weight. Always, always do what you desire to do. Always. So that's the third shockingly, um, oh, sorry. Yeah, that's the third shocking break. Weight, <laughs> my goodness, toxic weight loss thought that I see so pervasive in the thoughts of my clients and many women and used to be within my thought own thoughts as well. Look, like and subscribe in the in the description is all the different ways that you can get more free content from me or work with me. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.